This is the Felican K13 keyboard and mouse combo from Amazon Australia, and it's one of the cheapest gaming orientated sets I could find listed on the site at just 33 Aussie dollars. Is this set worth looking at? Let's find out. Included in the box is the 104 key keyboard, an optical mouse, and this small black and green cloth mouse mat. Let's start off the tour with the mouse, which is actually the first mouse I have looked at on this channel that has no side buttons. Instead on the left side is this plastic grip, which does a terrible job of holding your thumb in place without sliding. On the right side, it's exactly the same with another terrible plastic grip. Surprisingly, the left and right main mouse buttons are quite firm and well made with great actuation, but unfortunately I do not know what switches they use or what they're even rated at. The rubber coated scroll wheel has quite sloppy steps, but a solid click, which is somewhat redeeming. The DPI switch is positioned way too far back to comfortably press on the fly, so hopefully you won't need it very often to switch between the four DPI levels, which are 800, 1600, 2000, and 2400, which the mouse has no visual indication of what DPI you are on, or if you have just switched it. On the palm area is this interesting statement of Top Esport S brand, which is obviously a false statement and poorly written, as with their entire Amazon listing. Protruding at the front is a 1.5 meter plastic coated cord terminating in a USB 2.0 connector. Underneath is four small to medium sized feet which do a decent enough job of helping the body to glide. In the middle is an, according to the product page, true 2400 DPI A 3305 Pro Gamain sensor. Yes, another spelling error, which is an optical sensor apparently. All over the top and sides of the mouse is some weak lighting that changes colour but you cannot change the colour or effect yourself. The mouse is made entirely of plastic and despite feeling like a cheap piece of garbage when I tried to twist and stretch the body it was quite solid with little to no flex at all. The design of the body is symmetrical which means it can be used by both left and right handed users. Size wise we are looking at 131mm long, 72mm wide and 38mm high and weighing in at a surprising 95 grams. Let's move on to the keyboard. This is a full 104 key setup with the media functions assigned as secondaries on the F keys which can be accessed by holding down the function key next to the right alt key. The font is legible with a sort of 90s cyber hacker look to it which you can make your own mind up if you like it or not. The keycaps are plastic and easy to remove with just your fingers and reveal underneath the rubber dome switches which are some of the cheapest and worst switches to ever use. Here is a typing test to prove my point. Just listen to all that mush. The cable is again a 1.5 meter rubber coated cord with a USB 2.0 connector on the end. Underneath is two plastic pop out feet and two small rubber pads located at the bottom which do next to nothing to stop the keyboard from sliding. For lighting, this keyboard has three different lighting profiles which are just different colours spread across the board but if you press the function and print screen it will breathe across the three colour profiles or function and pause break it will breathe the selected colour profile. The keyboard is mainly constructed of plastic and has terrible build quality with a huge amount of flex to the point that if you apply a little too much pressure in the middle it will bow just by typing too hard. Size wise the keyboard is 440mm long, 136mm wide and 37mm high with the legs extended and weight wise the board comes in at 601 grams which is really light. Something else to note is the board has 19 key anti-ghosting which can be helpful in gaming situations. Time to do some testing, with the first test being sensor recognition height, which is done by lifting the mouse off the mat and slowly lowering it until the sensor is beginning to be recognised. This mouse did quite well, with it barely registering until it was almost on the mat, so this is a pass. Next test is line prediction, where we draw a straight line in paint and see if the sensor unnaturally corrects it. Unfortunately, the sensor had major line prediction problems, so this is a fail. Next up is sensor skipping, which is tested by drawing continual spirals and seeing if there is any breaks within the image. Thankfully the drawing stayed connected, so this is a pass. Sensor rattle is another thing I like to test, which is done by holding the cord tight and shaking the mouse. Unfortunately there is a little bit of a rattle there, so it is a fail. The next test is mouse acceleration, which I like to test in CSGO, by rapidly dragging my mouse left to right and up and down, and look for inconsistencies in the cursor. Thankfully this mouse felt like it had perfect drag, so this is a pass. For game testing, I decided to mess around in Fortnite for a few hours and see how the combo responded in a fast paced environment. The mouse performed great, being accurate and responsive, although I did miss my side buttons for building, but the keyboard was a huge letdown by not registering some of my key presses, meaning I sometimes missed pickups or my character didn't manoeuvre the way I wanted them to, which got frustrating quickly.
In conclusion, the best way to sum up this combo is honestly, it's just okay at best. I would never recommend it to anyone, not even as a cheap and nasty present for your least favourite sibling or child. The mouse is actually one of the best I've tested, but the keyboard is a huge letdown, with it being worse than some of those cheap office keyboards, which is really saying something. If you do want to torture yourself or someone else with this combo, the Amazon link will be in the description below, which is tied to my associates link, so I will receive a small kickback if you do decide to buy it. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing for more reviews and other content in the future. If you have a suggestion, question or criticism, leave a comment, and thank you very much for watching.